Well, this is a kind of different mental health vlog. I don't normally groom myself on tape while I'm doing these. I try to, you know, have my shit together before I do these. But I think it helps with the point that I'd like to make today about things like the Crown Act and having natural hair and things that a lot of people take for granted but in my world and a lot of black women's world is a very serious topic for the longest time growing up especially having my hair be its natural coil having to try to maintain and manage it was a struggle many of us know the pain of literally pressing and perming and burning our follicles to not be coily and kinky to lose its natural coil was something that we shot for because we were taught to hate the natural look of our hair we were taught not to embrace the side of ourselves because it wasn't beautiful or professional, whatever bullshit they wanted to use for black people to tell us that our natural hair wasn't good. And many of us took it to heart. And some of us still struggle with that. And it can be health induced. You know, my mom had and still has severe thinning hair issues. And it could be a combination of genetics. It could be a combination of stressing, you know. I think people don't take it seriously because you take for granted some of the things that come to you naturally. You never had somebody look at things that naturally come from your body as off or, or off-putting. Or worse yet, have that even that natural hair ability not come to you. And being called bald, being mocked for wearing weaves or straightening our hair. There's just no way to comfortably be a black person in this world. And it exhausts you. And you internalize a lot of that focus on things about yourself that you already feel insecure and self-conscious about. You begin to realize that this world constantly points out your flaws as if those things have to define you. And it becomes a very touchy subject for us. And I know that for some people it's like, well, you shouldn't let that define you. Yesterday, as we talked about what happened at the Oscars, because, of course, that is the hot button Twitter topic. All these people weighing in about, eh, is violence the answer? You know, was Will Smith in the wrong? I am team fuck around and find out. And I know that shocks some people because I do my best to have that air of civility. All y'all act like home training isn't a thing for black people. It is definitely a thing. We are taught from the cradle. How we carry ourselves, bear weight. How we carry ourselves, bear reaction. The whole fuck around and find out isn't just some saying that you wear on a shirt. This is a, really our lives. So when I say what Will did wasn't easy, wasn't just, oh, a, a, a reaction, but a buildup of years of smiling, being that good one, I just don't think you understand how much that respectability bullshit that you try to put across really hurts us. We internalize so much microaggression. And it just comes out. And for people who act like they're only civil, they, 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 y'all are some of the most violent people in the world. And you know who I'm talking about when I address that. But you want to convince the world that you are just an air of civility, that you would never come to blows as we literally ignore the wars that you start, the fights that you constantly have, the fact that you carry guns as your answer to everything here in this country. No, no, we're supposed to believe that you have an air of civility. But where I grew up, 
if you had a lot of mouth and you couldn't back it up, you got your ass beat. It was a way to learn, okay, this was a boundary. I shouldn't cross that boundary. And I get that for some of you who don't like having actual consequences for the shit that you say that is hurtful to other people, that what happened at the Oscars was a shock to your system. But for those of us who know the pain of being mocked for things about ourselves, that even if we wanted to change, we couldn't. The things we don't want to change about ourselves, things that you deem flaws that are just a part of who we are, whether it's the hair on our head, whether it's the color of our skin, whether it is physical or even mental features about ourselves that are a part of who we are. Our existence is not your punchline. And I refuse to be gracious into an early grave because that's what a lot of us do. We try so hard to be respectable for you guys. We try so hard to be the good one. And that shit's killing us on a level that I cannot stress enough. Constantly internalizing the microaggressions, the disrespect of who we are. Taking this shit as a joke when it's far from funny. Trying not to show that hurt so that we can be better when y'all still look down on us anyway. And I know that for a lot of you, my words are still not going to resonate. Still not going to penetrate that layer of, well, I just don't see it. It doesn't happen to me or, I, you know, I get mocked too for my, my life and stuff. It's not the same. You did not grow up in a world where you're constantly reminded that you're different. And somehow that difference makes you less than. Somehow that difference makes it easier for people from all sides to mock who you are. I'm going to talk about it more tonight on the Bonnet Chronicles, but the look of hurt in Jada Pinkett Smith's eyes was so palpable to me and many other black women. I know everybody else wanted to focus on Will and how he laughed originally, and I don't care about any of that. I wasn't thinking about what Will did until after he smacked Chris, and I felt like, yeah, that's a justifiable reaction when your partner is hurt. I know some of you don't get that allegedly, but some of the ones you use that were really clutching your pearls are the first ones who would yell at a customer service worker who didn't get your order right, who would start a fight with somebody if you thought you could get away with it, especially if you could hide behind your partner. It's real funny, the lines of defending honor and who deserves such defending. And I already see how many comedians are jumping in to take jabs at Jada, saying that it wasn't a, it was just a G.I. Jane joke. The fact that G.I. Jane's character, Demi Moore, had a shaved head shouldn't have been touchy for most people. Shaving your head is normally a thing you do for either looks-wise, aesthetics-wise, or whatever situation you're in. But for women, our hair is a different thing. For some women, hair doesn't matter. I went through that phase for the longest time. I chopped everything off. I was like, I just don't care anymore. And then as I got older and I really started to love my natural curls and stuff again, I wanted it to grow. But like a lot of people, I struggle with keeping it nice, the upkeep, using products. I currently use this, you know, to keep my hair from drying out. I pull it up in natural protective states and stuff now. I am a lot better to my hair than I was when I was younger. But I got lucky that I didn't go through the falling out and the patches and stuff. And not a lot of black women can say that right now, especially as we get older and our bodies change. I'm in my 40s now, so the constant hormonal shifts happen as well. This is a reality for a lot of us, and it's a touchy subject. And just because you can't understand how it makes us feel doesn't make it a not valid 
feeling. I think what troubles me about the whole conversation about the Oscars was y'all just view us as an easy target. And insult comedy is just such a weak ass way of being anyway. But too many people lean into it because it's easy. And black women are such a low-hanging fruit for your fucking punchlines that it's just troubling to, to us. And it just felt like yesterday I watched so many people ignore Jada's pain. Ignore the fact that Chris constantly oversteps his bounds when it comes to black women because they don't care about us unless they have to. He has black daughters. How would he feel if somebody disrespected his daughter on a national level like that, global level technically? Because this was a watched around the world. I don't personally watch the Oscars. I just don't feel like it speaks to me. I feel like the so-called diversity is always forced. It is the last gatekeeped white event. So much so that when non-white people win, like when Parasite one best picture people get up in arms because y'all know this isn't for us and you make it clear that it isn't for us that's why so many of you were up in arms on social media yesterday with your respectability and why we should uh we defend comedians but i noticed that you want to defend the comedian that was shitting on a black woman because for you making you laugh your hee hee and kikis are so much more important than our dignity and that was made clear in y'all's constant argument. But what was worse were those who used it with the what about? What if it had been Betty White who, she's resting in peace. Why are you even invoking a, a beloved icon who has passed to bring up your point, to insert your whiteness in a space that had nothing to do with you? Because you know this was y'all's award show. And we are just side characters expected to smile, act like we're just lucky to be there. And this is why so many of us just don't fuck with the Oscars. This is why so many of us just don't want to be in your space because faking that funk is exhausting. Being one of the good ones is exhausting. Dealing with the constant picking on us and being your punchline is fucking exhausting. And I know for some of you, you just didn't care. This is just another topic for you to weigh in longly on and then move on to the next one. But for the rest of us, this is our lives. And we watch that it doesn't matter the level of fame. It doesn't matter the level of so-called respectability. It doesn't matter if Hollywood had pegged you as the good guy actor. When you get to that point where the joke just takes it too far. When you realize that you are tired of being the punchline, or you're tired of seeing your partner being the punchline, that low-hanging insult fruit. Yeah, people are like, well, Regina King made a jab. She talked about their relationship, which, yeah, for me, I still don't see the point of that. But it wasn't a direct personal insult to Jada's looks, something that she wouldn't be as sensitive about because it's out there. She has put out there her and Will's complex relationship thing. And I've learned early on in life that minding my own business and worrying about my own relationship was more important to me than constantly being in other people's business. But some of y'all have shown that you can't be about that life. You have to insert yourself in people's relationships and business because that's what you do. But the, the thing that bothers me, if people make a judgment calls based on Will and Jada's relationship, not realizing that it still doesn't mean she deserves to be an insult comics punching bag. Because some of you who act like you would graciously accept a flaw of yours being a punchline, nah, you're not going to fool me with that. We all have a line and a limit. We all have something about ourselves that we might understand is a sensitive topic to us, but we know people are just going to mock no matter what, whether it's our size, whether it's things like our teeth, 
whether it's our skin color, we have navigated this world just trying to get by as people jab and insult and pretty much mock our existence. But for the most part, a lot of us just survive. That's all we can do. Some of us roll with it, laugh, and worse yet, some of us lean into it and hurt other people because it seems to be the only way to, to, to get out that aggression. I feel like there was just so much nuance to what happened between Chris, Will, and Jada that so many of you who've never lived this life could not understand. And then so many of us who have are trying to vocalize why it's important to have this conversation openly and honestly without the pearl clutching. Understanding that actions have to have certain consequences because we're tired of it. But those of you who don't care, those of you who are still in the vein of, it's just a joke. We'll never understand why this hurt us so much. And you make it clear that our feelings just don't matter in this situation. And that is the problem that I and so many black women have today. That is the problem that I and so many black men have today. Because you refuse to understand our humanity. You refuse to see our pain as something that's worthy of a valid conversation. You think we should just push past, put on a smile, turn the other cheek as you keep smacking our cheek, as you keep bruising our, our whole being. And sometimes you just can't be gracious. When that look of pain crossed Jada's face, I felt that to my core. I feel it every time I have to deal with somebody that dings me. I don't respond to them anymore. I make it known that I am not going to keep feeding into that energy. But it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. And I shouldn't have to keep navigating the world that thinks that my pain is funny. That thinks that we are just a fucking punchline for them to punch down on. I looked at the way Twitter handled this Oscar situation, I could tell how divided things were going to be, but it wasn't surprising. It wasn't surprising the people calling for respectability because that's all they know. But what shocked me was the amount of people jumping in to, oh yeah, Jada's a bald bitch, and she's so sensitive to it, why don't she get a wig? That was Tom Segura, somebody I normally watch. My partner and I normally sit and laugh at his specials because normally he is poking fun at himself. He is talking about his life. But he is another one that tries to sneak in things. And I noticed that about him. If he can really punch down, he will. And he took the ability to make something that wasn't about him that he could have kept his whole ass dumb ass opinion out of and inserted just the, the most stupidest insult the most easiest insult, if it was the dozens, he would have got blasted away because there was a lot about his dumb ass that could just be taken down. But that wasn't the time for it. But he knew he could get away with mocking Jada's appearance. And it's just tiring. You know, I just feel like a lot of people don't take our pain seriously until we react. And even then, it's now... Oh, we need to penalize Will Smith. How dare he take our white respectability award show and, and turn it into the fisticuffs hour. Y'all have really shown that you don't like actions having consequences. You just really want people to be mocked and, 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 and sully. This is supposed to be a respectable award show. Why are you having comics in this day and age up there acting like fools anyway? Every time I've seen, like, clips, because, like I said, I don't watch the Oscars. But every time I've seen clips of people weighing in on things like Ricky Gervais and other people making stuff that just didn't land. Because actors are just going there to get an award and get props for themselves. They're there to feel good about the work they supposedly did. You know, even though the millions of dollars they allegedly make for these shits should be enough. They need that award, too. Why add the whole, I'm going to roast you with an insult comic thing? Who is that for? You were trying to draw in people that normally don't watch your show. 
And I'm sorry. The things that I'm into as a parent, as all the geeky stuff that's around my room, it's just never been an award show for me. Heck, as it is, fantasy is barely for me. So I just wasn't interested in that. But when I say that this slap was the first time I perked up about the Oscars, or the only time I buzzed about what was going on, at an award show like that. And it's not to say that we need more of that. But I feel like a lot of people only want to focus on the slap itself and not the cause of the slap. They don't want to have that nuanced conversation because they still operate in the realm that actions shouldn't have a negative consequence. And I am full-on equivalent exchange. Chris Rock has constantly brought his bullshit to the Smith family. Whether you understand that or not, I don't care. This wasn't the first time he tried to punk out Jada. She has been a constant source of his jabs and insults. And I'm sorry, if you're going to make your career punching down on people, don't be surprised when people decide to punch back. That is just the reality. And a lot of you comedians are starting to understand that if this is how you're going to make your career, you're doing it at the risk of losing jobs, losing the laughter, because people are tired of being your punchline. And if you're still on the end of, it's just a joke, I can laugh at myself, good on you. You found your way to survive. The rest of us don't want to be your punching bags. And I think that is a very valid feeling. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. This world's attitude is changing. And it's only a few really awful people that want to keep it the same way because they get power off of hurting people. We've got to stop elevating that mentality. I'm going to wrap this up. I will be back later on this afternoon with the Bonnet Chronicles, probably talking a bit more in depth about this topic. There's just so much to unpack about being a good one and, and, and dealing with the microaggressions of existing in this country and beyond. And I think I just wanted to do this mental health vlog to showcase how exhausting it is. Not only navigating what happened, but seeing the attitudes that certain people have about respectability and who's allowed to be angry and what we're allowed to be angry about and who deserves offending. It all came to a head yesterday, and sadly, it wasn't surprising. And while for you, hair isn't a big deal, for some of us, it really is deeply rooted in who we are, and it just hurts when we're mocked for it. So just be mindful of that the next time you weigh in on Jada's appearance or any black woman's appearance. Just be mindful of the struggles we're going through. The fact that we have to have legislation passed just to have our natural look not be told is unprofessional or undesirable or unwanted. You've never lived this existence, so it's hard for you to understand our pain. But it doesn't make our pain invalid. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you to anybody who tunes into these. Thank you to all who have been sharing these. It's not easy for me to do these mental health vlogs, but I feel like they are necessary because I feel like while mental health is talked about a bit more online, it's always done in such negative tones. People don't bring a reality to the situation because it's hard to put yourself out there. And I'm just hoping that by putting myself out there, you see the human side to this. Because it really becomes exhausting. Living in a world that constantly devalues who you are. And I just want things to be better. But I'm going to go. I think I've said enough this time around. I'm just hopeful that people start to understand. I just wish I could do this without the emotion.
But you see, anger isn't the only thing that builds up over time. I'm just tired of her and I don't want to feel sensitive to stuff like this, but it is for real. The reality of existing like this. The reality of dealing with the constant jabs in this world gets to you. And so many people know this pain, know exactly how Jada was feeling, know exactly why Will sprung to action. And I just want y'all to know I see you. I know that violence isn't the answer. And I know that people want to link in what he did to abusive. Abusive partners don't do that. Abusive partners will sit there and, and mock your pain with the aggressive person. What would have been laughing harder at Jeter's pain if he was abusing her? So y'all need to stop that too. But I, I, that's a whole nother day. I'm going to talk about it more to, tonight on the Bonnet Chronicles, but... For real, y'all. I, I need to I need to go calm down and relax and then just remember that not everybody in this world is into that insult anymore. And I think that's why we're seeing so many things like this come to a head. The world is changing. It's slow and painful for some of us, but it is changing. And for that much I'm at least grateful. But I'm going to wrap this up until next week. And thank you again, everybody who watches, everybody who shares, all the new followers here and on Twitch. Y'all are appreciated. I really do. I'm glad that these vlogs get to people and help you understand what this life is about. And hopefully I can keep doing these and, and just sharing things with y'all. But until then, I will see y'all again soon.